Oh, I'm working on my new weasel cackle. <laughs> my new weasel cackle. Um, How are you? I'm good. Did you? Are, we, are you going to come in after my discussion about bestiality or before? Um, we'll now see. you have to come. We'll see how, <laughs> we'll <to> see how <laughs> it goes. Because I saw one of these. Uh, we can talk about this in the separate time. But I saw one of these. Uh, you know, with I guess they fake a headline. I, it's not like I bought the headline. Oh and, right, Who, and so it's a comedian Michelle. Oh, right, is a and her Michelle Wolf. Right, which convicted is, on bestiality. Bestiality, kind of, yeah. and you know her her Twitter handle is Michelle is a wolf. You know, so it's like she and her own thing is doing the joke. It took me about five, first of all, I just thought, oh, it's phony, it's phony. Then I realized this whole thing was based on the fact that her last name is Wolf. I don't know. Was it? Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. Why? Be- bestiality. Wolf. Comedian <laughs> okay. Wolf accused right. of being... Am I seeing too... See, I, I got in this trouble this last week, too. I thought Dennis Miller was actually making a joke that was a bad joke when he said, I'll come up with mean jokes by Wednesday. I'll do a couple of days of research or something, he said, right? Right, but now someone told me his new column comes out on wednesday so that's what he's doing yeah it was up for debate there for a bit i think that's what it was it was an attempt at a joke no i mean at first i was with you at first i thought he was it oh was you saw like, me say that like online a, right? yeah, yeah i think yeah. it was like a slam on michelle wolf like i don't know who she is so i have to look it up <laughs> it's so weak though right right I mean, it's it, weak either way it's weak either way but it's like i think he didn't i think now i'm back to is no joke it's coming out wednesday yeah, I think that was it. Because was, you know what was, it is? He was priming the pump for his He's Wednesday priming the pump. Yeah. He's priming the pump. Oh, it's going to be mean, Chooch. Oh, it's going to be. Oh, I'm oh, going to. Both mean. guns blazing. Coming out with two howitzers. <laughs> Cha-cha-choo-choo-chee-chee. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is now officially hacked to do a Dennis Miller. Cha-cha. In, the, in two days, it became hacked to do Dennis Miller. I don't Miller. think it is because he, think needs it is, to be drum, he needs to be drummed out of the business. I think it's the last train to Snarksville. <laughs> You know what? You I think you might be right because whenever I start to think of a reference to put into the Dennis Miller formula, yeah. I get tired very quickly. It's, yeah, yeah. it's like uh I always come up with it's like reading Crime and Punishment by uh who wrote that? Dostoevsky and Karashnikov is uh is uh, but then I can never get cuz what he does then is he goes to like the Jetsons. He goes to right. different periods. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, very very Elizabethan. <laughs> He is such a moron, though. I'm so mad at him right now, only because I'm just—I've had it with all these people. Because of that thing last night uh, with the uh, the that Sunday night, I was so uh, the White House Correspondents' Dinner Saturday, yeah, Saturday, whatever. I watched it, <laughs> but just when I started, when these pundits started with their critiques, the worst was with like uh, I said this on Twitter today. It was like. You know John Carl? He's a jerk anyway. Jonathan Carl is one of the organizers of the events. You, you could see on the day as, that as each person decided she was no longer funny, right. they all started clamming up. But she was hilarious to them when she wasn't talking about uh, Sarah Sanders or them. Right. <laughs> she nailed them to the wall. Yeah, no, right? I, think, I think she accomplished her mission. She accomplished her mission. And you could, no, I tried to look at it from the other people's point of view. Like, oh, okay, she said, she said, pussy. Right? Yeah. They voted for a goddamn president who grabs people by the pus- pussy. All right. Are we going to, are you going to relitigate this? <laughs> no, I don't want to. I don't want to. Can you, it's been do you two have two days a, of this on TV. Do you have a, a, a card? Oh, I thought maybe you could put a card in of mine from a, <laughs> a, a slot from a previous show. So that's what, well, where do you, how about this? Where do you come down? I know you're going to come down against the comedian. <laughs> yes, of course. No, I thought, you know, it just, I think she absolutely knew what she was doing. Which is being her both first of all using her sense of humor, which was you know, yes. <laughs> which you know, was, I have never seen her before. That's the first time I've ever seen her. Yeah, I never heard of her. Before. That's how is it that I've never heard of somebody? I'm a mover and a shaker. She's a New York person. I, think. I know, but I thought she was just so funny. But go ahead, you were saying. Uh, but whatever the case, it's not like she made an agreement that you know they got to vet her jokes or anything. So I mean, it's like that's you know that's who they got. Well, that's the worst part is when the White House counsel. The cowardly, it's the most cowardly letter I've ever seen in my life where she goes, uh, uh, our theme last night was unity or some crap like that. And I'm sorry that those 15 minutes don't fit. You, are you really telling us that you wanted the comic to write positive jokes about unifying? Right. I mean, it's just this woman had seen Michelle, uh, the, uh, I forgot her name. She's from Bloomberg who organ Taleb, Steph Taleb. The, the, you know, it's one, it's like, it's like that gig. I mean, I don't, you know, I want to say it's a no, it's a no win gig in a lot of ways. Well, but, and also, because, Bush, Blue, I mean, not Bush, 
uh, Trump ruined the gig. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I mean, the only fun thing about it was watching the president do stand-up. Yeah. Occasionally, you know, the, and sometimes the comic got, got Colbert, good jokes. I thought yeah, Seth but Myers Col- really grilled him. Yeah. That was but good. that's what you're looking for is, yes. the, is discomfort. Discomfort. You know, it's not really a roast. Uh, well, that's, well, why not? Well, because it doesn't have the, it, you know, there's no rebuttal oh. at the end. No, 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 it's not like a classic roast, but you it know. contains, no, those kind of things contains roast-like roasty, yes. sensibilities. You know, and I have no problem with doing roast-like jokes. Yeah. I mean, it's just a choice you make. It is a chance for a comedian to see how the kind of guts they have. Right. And different comics have taken different, different. Yeah, she had strength guts. of swings. Right. She went in there. The whole route. To fucking, I think she even said it, to burn the place down. You yeah. Know? And she, and, and that, uh, yeah. So, and she did. How about the joke about, <laughs> this is the one that but I But it's like believe. that and the Academy Awards are like kind of no win gigs in a lot of ways in terms That's of. That's true. Because it's just too easy for people to say they aren't funny. Yeah, but the thing you is, know? so it's like Chuck Todd one year complained about uh, the Colbert thing. They are not only not funny, they're humorless pricks a lot of these people well, yeah i mean there's no right tone for that for yeah, that cause gig because there's no right tone for that evening yeah there's you, no right the tone. tone that's being struck you know having sarah sanders on the dais that, of the fucking white house correspondent center when not only is she an adversary she's a fucking enemy of the white house right. press but it's you know? okay for her to smear uh smear uh frederica wilson and it's all oh, that's okay right but she was her and you see kellyanne conway that a close-up of her like she's yelling at someone after the thing it's like, this is unbelievable. I mean, these people are literally monsters. Kellyanne Conway is a monstrous <laughs> yes. thing. And she's going to complain that her... And not because of her looks. No, not because <laughs> yes. of her looks. That was the thing that revealed more about about the people thinking it. They're yeah. thinking about Sarah Sanders. Oh, they, it must have been about their looks because you have, because they have those horrible right. thoughts. And it also mind. shows they have no sense of humor they because no humor. they can't parse the smoky eye joke as not being about her appearance. Uh, well, first of all, I couldn't parse it because I really haven't heard it. Yeah. So, but I, I didn't even think to think that it'd be about appearance. Right. First of all, it's a woman delivering the speech. You'd think she'd be a little bit more sensitive about uh, what's the deal with these uh, bra sizes. I mean, that's not ever been a joke under any circumstances. <laughs> but yeah, so I think the lid. I know that you're tired of this. I'm tired of it. I don't even want it, my mouth to be moving right now. <laughs> Yet. But the lid is coming off of this motherfucker. I'm cursing now because I'm so upset about it. Yeah. The lid is coming off. It's like it used to be in the old days that they at least had a position from from be, for being evil. Yes, they were evil, the GOP. Right. But they had, you know, like, oh, consistent... we're fiscally conservative. Right. We want the government out of our lives. They used to actually be conservationists before my time. Sure. Even in the 70s, they probably were conservationists. But they they're just evil and they don't they know they're evil. I know you like Mitch McConnell, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Josh. I know you have a poster of Mitch McConnell in your public. In my I public. like that haircut, Josh. It's it's the same haircut. It's bald no. guy, it's bald guy number no, four. You're wrong about that. I'll tell you why. <laughs> For the last year, I told you, don't do this thing where you have a mullet in the back. You have this long <laughs> mullet going halfway down your back. And you, you know, you would come to the club with a motorcycle. Uh huh. And I told you, Josh, you're not fooling anyone. Well, I brought the motorcycle on a trailer, which was a mistake. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't a honey wagon? Yes, it was a honey wagon. So I'm saying your hair is your hair. Yes, I have the greatest hair in the goddamn world. It's no question about it. I, I weep for people like you. <laughs> I weep. It's like the only place that you display self esteem. So I'll let you have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like Lori Kilmartin last night. She tweeted that uh, I wish I, I would I would hope it would get to the point where we could make where women could make fun of each other's looks. You know what I mean? Like she was basically saying, like uh, in general, women it's so fucked up a society that uh, we can't. You know that would be the she she'd like it that no one. I don't know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? She was saying like no explain her joke more. Uh, go fuck <laughs> all of yourselves. You know what? I'm cursing now. I like it. It's me. You don't uh, like it? It's one year. Oh, it's me. our one year anniversary show, I guess. I forget. No. Yes. No. Yeah. What is it? 52, baby. Josh Weinstein, Elvis Weinstein, and Andy Kindler. This is your life. <laughs> I can't believe you did it, Josh. Who's that voice, Josh? Oh, I always thought you would do Adam the Adam Sandler, I can't That's, believe oh, you're here. I <laughs> 
<laughs> turning down. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you have to be sorry. No, no. I just well, need to turn you down a <laughs> I'm thinking about bringing my own limiter. Yeah. Wouldn't that be someone who actually could have a plug-in limiter pedal? I think if it didn't mean something about sound, that would be better even. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you saying I'm No, 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 I didn't say anything. Oh, no. What were you saying? <laughs> I was in fact, saying you're a horrible person. You're a horrible. <laughs> I love our neighborhood, though. I'm going to tell you that right off the bat. Yeah? I love it. I've never been happier in my life. First of all, I feel like the king of walking. You can walk. I can walk down to uh, the mm, mm, king and, mm, mm, of walking. Yeah, downtown, right. downtown Sherman Oaks. I'm there in two minutes. Generally, the lack of walking is what distinguishes royalty. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love that David Spade joke about like whenever uh, anybody would rent a limo, you go, "Oh, great! You're telling the world I have fifty dollars." So you're walking. That's good. Yes, but I'm saying one way. I'm downtown Sherman Oaks, where it's all not happening. Right. Unless you think Crave is happening, and then Crave Sushi next door is happening. Then I could walk the other way. I'm at Sepulveda Boulevard. I'm just, these are fake names. I'm not <laughs> in Sherman Oaks. But the other way, I walk to Sepulveda Boulevard. There's a pot shop up there. It's like, I don't need a car, Josh, if all I had to do is smoke pot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And go to Crave. And pick up my mail. Yeah. I would be the, is there a money in that? I pick up my mail like a champ every right. day. I walk in there hoping for a check. That's all I do. I don't work on my career. I should be working on my career. And I, and in fact, I returned Alex's text. That's how I'm stepping it up. Wow. And I did record, returned a couple of emails. I saw that. It's yeah. very exciting. It's very in fact, exciting. I was sitting there. It was like about an hour before the podcast, and Andy starts sending email answers. Oh, like you have, what do you, what, you have, a pre show uh, ritual? And then he tweets, and I'll go. And, a- and my first thought is like, oh, oh, good. Andy's ready to come over already. That's just what it is. And then I'm going. He's going to be late anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. Now here's, oh my God. Here's the thing. You told me you weren't going to, it didn't upset you. <laughs> no. But I am indeed late. <laughs> no, but it was just, it was just funny that fact. you were so rare to go oh, oh, for you know clearly what? like an hour before the show. I was five minutes late simply by trying to it say. It was 10, and I don't care no, about that. No, eight minutes late. But, all right, eight. No, nine minutes late. Right. I meant five minutes late because I, I thought you said. Within the five minutes is the whole thing. No, it road. totally is. Yeah, but I came at nine. No, this is all the only reason I care about it <laughs> is, was because I saw it coming. Yeah, but here's the thing. <laughs> I lo- wasted eight minutes tweeting because you know how sometimes Twitter, like you can't get the at thing doesn't come up. Like oh. the address won't come up because it's too busy or something. Yeah. You don't have that ever? Like a thought spiral wouldn't come up. So I was get- I had to go on my own. Thought underscore spiral. Wow. Which I've been told in my time. That's good. Sure. And then I thought, I'm, I'm sure yours was J. Elvis Weinstein. Yeah. But I wasn't, I, and I'm never sure. And that that literally took eight minutes. Because I said, he's going to be so, and literally because I said, he's going to be so proud of me. All I care is about <laughs> I just, you being proud I just of love me. The way you, it's adorable the way you cram for the show. Yeah, but why is it, shouldn't I be, shouldn't I get somebody who can do more for my career to be pressing? If you're looking for approval, yeah, you could do a lot better. No, you give me a decent amount of <laughs> Now, do you, first of all, do you have any new business? Do, do you want to read the minutes from the last meeting? Uh, no, I'm all hyped up that it's our one year. Oh, yeah, it's our one year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> wait, but wait a second. If this is the 50, how many weeks are there in the year? 52. So this is the end of our first year. Well, we did a Christmas show. Oh. That, didn't, that wasn't even numbered. Was, are you saying the Christmas, test, show was, that, the Christmas show was test best of show number one? So How many years? If you did the... This is our 53rd podcast. Let's say we get big as a podcast. Let's just say it. <laughs> let me, let me, I need a, we get huge. I need a second to get into that space. Josh! 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 Yeah, Andy? No, no. This is a fan running up the street. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> um, let's say we do five years of the show. Okay. Um, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my, my memory is getting better. Now, I just want to say, the people who worry about my memory... I understand that I do have to stop smoking pot, and I'm in con- I'm in consultations with myself right now. And I'm not saying stop smoking pot because I don't want to smoke pot. Sure. Oh, I want to smoke no, pot. No, we know. But we want to see if me without pot is going to bring my memory, my short term memory, back. And so uh, now I'm negotiating with myself how long? Three hours break? All right. A day? No, it's got to be. Two days, negative. It's got to be one of these two-week deals. 
where I walk, where I call you up halfway through and go, oh, I feel so f- free now. <laughs> it's Andy White Knuckles Kindler on the phone. Oh, you know, I don't need it. I, I can prove I don't need pot. <clears throat> oh, if my me- if I give up pot for two weeks, which I'm planning to, I'm in consultations with myself. I, I think that's great. The same people handling. You, this is where I back off. <laughs> the ball's all in your court. Why do you use uh, basketball terminology? Uh, I think that's, no, back that was off more of not. a tennis. That was more oh, of a okay. tennis. Oh, okay. The ball's in my court. Yeah. I guess that is tennis. It certainly is. <laughs> oh, can you get, catch me up? Because there'll be no way I'm going to do it unless you catch me up. And what's happening with the playoffs? I know by the time people hear this, but have the uh, 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 who, who's th- uh, who's through? Are the are the Cleveland Cavaliers through? They did. They made it oh, through oh. in seven games. Okay, the answer to this, this the seventh game. I just asked you a couple of sports questions right, okay. on podcast time. Right. Who won the seventh game with the Toronto Maple Leafs? I don't know. Oh, okay. Because the seventh game. One year, I arrived in Toronto. They were up in a seventh game, seven game series against Boston. They were up by three goals in the last period. By the time I landed at the airport and got to my hotel, they'd lost. And I was, I've been, I've been uh, inconsolable, inconsolable since then. Right. So I'm hoping they won. No, I know probably something you're thinking is like, <laughs> you know, Andy, not one of the worst things to talk about, not your worst moments on the podcast, but I don't know that people are going to find it compelling to hear you ask about scores from four weeks ago. That was, I mean, that was particularly... Obnoxious. That, yeah, that one was just like, that had no sports content no. <laughs> or interesting factor. Except I know the Mets are doing pretty good this year. The Mets are doing good. Yeah. And someone said the Dodgers are not doing good. They're not. They're underachieving. I know, and people are already counting them out, which is fine for me. People will try to count out the Dodgers, but uh, you know what I would say? Anything but... What did he think? He thought he was going to be a big shot? Apparently, he thought it would make him a big man. Anything but. That will never, that will be, that should be on your gravestone. That's been with me for 20 some years. You'll never, you'll never lose that. <laughs> the other thing I used to have in my mind. I Apparently, could, he thought it would shake free from his brain. <laughs> Anything but. Yeah, I can't. I, nothing shakes free. For years, in my head, or to anybody who would listen, I would do my impression of Phil Rizzuto, Phil Rizzuto's money store. Yeah. Because he'd always say, at the money store. And I, I don't know, you t- you recommended the money store to me. I thought I it did. was going to be a bad Absolutely. deal. But 30% interest is not bad. But he would well, always you say. Said, you said, I need some money. I instantly. said, I know where they sell it. <laughs> but he used to go, come to the money store. Short payments spread out over many years. And he would do, he would gesture from the short amount to the long amount. And I couldn't get that out of my head. Yeah. I'll eat a bug. Who used to say that? It's now time for L.A. quizzes. Okay. <laughs> I'll eat a bug. Who's that? Is that Who is that? Is that Hal Worthington? It's not Hal Worthington, but it's Cal, Cal Worthington. Worthington. Sorry. I wish he was Hal Worthington. If you want to eat a bug, go, go see, see Cal. Cal. If there's trouble in the thing, ba-ba-ba. And he would go, he, he always would say, you can't beat my deal, you can't beat my deal. That's all he said. He had no personality. I, I know he passed away. He had no personality. You know they always say like a uh, like crazy Eddie or these people. Don't we have a crazy guy out here who uh. sells? Oh, <laughs> isn't that one guy who sells TVs out? He's like, oh, I'm yeah. weird, Jerry. <laughs> Strokey Joe. <laughs> oh, those guys are never that crazy. What's crazy about them? <laughs> well, what's crazy about them? Going, oh, I'm it's insane. There's nothing insane. About their dealership. I wish it was insane. I wish they had a morning zoo over there. Are you doing that on I'm Dying Up Here? I mean, I'm, so, I'm sorry. That's for my next script. <laughs> so I was driving right up by you. I did ADR for I'm Dying Up Here. Yeah? How'd it go? Well, Does I that mean that your actual thing didn't go so good? Or? That's okay. So <laughs> the old Andy, which could be the new Andy, yeah. that's exactly what I said. Yeah. Do you know why I said that going into the ADR? Because you hate yourself. Because I, they wanted me to do every line. <laughs> really? Every line over. Oh, geez. <laughs> that's not, let me say what that isn't. That's not additional dialogue. <laughs> no. When you see the original locked well, script. Well, it's called audio, automatic dialogue replacement. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Why would an idiot like me walk around and just assume, like an idiot, that it's additional dialogue recorded? No, it's... So what is it? I think it's automatic dialogue replacement. That's fantastic. Well, if it's automatic, why am I or uh, do, schlepping I can't, I can't swear on the A, but the D and the R is dialogue replacement. Yeah, so... Uh, 
So I was very worried, but then I was. Uh, this is where I know the therapy is absolutely helping me. I'm a more healthy person. I said to myself in my mind, "Oh, oh no, 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 Andy, do, don't go into that area, right? Because you will be miserable. You may be wrong. I've been, my, and even if you are right, what are you going to do? Go in the go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was so bad. <laughs> Which I did say to them, and they liked it. Yeah, sure. They thought I was doing Cherry Lewis. <laughs> I've done. ADR on Boz Burgers, you don't have to brag. I've done it on this show and one other show. And the what are the odds of this? I'll tell you. I, I was in there. I said, the guy goes, we, have we met before? I said, I don't know. You look familiar. I, I said, I did the last episode of... Uh, you of, can't spell Andy Kindler without ADR. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Yes. That's pretty good. You think that will help? <laughs> you can use it. I won't. I, I did the. I think I've told you this too many times. I was the last voice on uh, Wizards of Waverly Place. That's our, that's been our show. Have a good night. Whatever yeah. it was, and that 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 I had just. He goes. I reckon I had been in that studio. What is the odds that uh, that that studio was these? Uh, maybe there's only three post houses. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> so I got to see myself in a scene where I am in a where I was very scared of it yeah. because I'm getting a massage in a, in a gym. Oh, okay. And you know, a man of my age. Sure. The man boobs that we don't you're clutching. Want, <laughs> we don't want people to say, he has nice, you know, not my kid, he's got nice breasts. Yeah. You didn't come that way. I looked like I was a normal human being, 70 year old man, just a good 70 <laughs> year old man. What happened was the network wanted me to be less angry all the way through. Really? Okay. And when I got on the set that day, I also thought it was going to start out with me being like, because uh, I say to the guy, hey, aren't you supposed to be somewhere? And um, but I'm being okay. Don't think that's my acting. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So it luckily, was really a luckily good they've replaced your acting. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they did. They both laughed at Hulk running. They both laughed at that. Yeah. So they most people who are in edit bays have seen uh, Modern Romance. Right, I suppose. That's the editor's movie. Right. Really. Yeah. But then when I reference Postcards from the Edge, I got nothing. Yeah. Because I love that scene, Postcards from the Edge, where she goes back, Carrie Fisher goes back into the studio and... Meryl she, Streep, actually. What did I say? Carrie Fisher, which was still on track. I, know, I can't say. She wrote it. it Meryl was, Streep was so great in that movie. I think she really captured Carrie Fisher's kind of energy, in a way. I'm an idiot. So, uh, and that scene where he goes, Hackman says... Show, shows her how she can change this mistake that she made because she was uh, doing drugs on the set. That's as good as it got all day. Yes. Yeah. You remember these things. I think that's a great movie. I, I've seen it twice now. Yeah. It's dripping with good lines. and you know. I understand scenes, what you're saying. Don't make me look too deep into the movies, right. <laughs> Josh. Don't make me look too deep into my memories. Well, are you saying the movie doesn't hold up? Because I notice when I watch Laughing now, the TV... <laughs> Slides no, down no, the no. wall. Have you done that joke before? Oh God, yes. <laughs> and I write it down the card. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Is amazing in that movie. Uh, uh, Shirley McLean. Oh, so great, so great. Jack, you Jack Nichols in there. Look, stop talking. No, I just mixed two movies up. Yeah, well, you nice. know what the movie I mixed up was? Turns of Endearment. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, but was Jack Nicholson in this one too? Uh, I don't no, think so. No, Jack Nicholson's a lot of movies. Though. Gene you know, Hackman. What's that? Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman was the big uh, the Kahuna. I really. This is where. Remember, I tell you, I start to worry about. I think uh, Richard Cross. Dreyfus was the doctor. In which one? Yes. How do you remember that in Postcards from the Edge? I didn't remember that. I just saw it recently for the second time. Did not remember that Richard Dreyfus was the. Uh, I always wanted to act like Richard Dreyfus because I figured that's as far as I could go. Yeah. Looks wise. So, what, I mean, no, look. So, like, goodbye, girl, Richard Dreyfus. I'm not saying but I don't think Richard Dreyfus is unattractive. I'm very attracted to him, which I find odd. Sure. But do you think he's better looking? If you had to be, and you didn't know me, and I wasn't sitting in the room, and someone said, "Who's better looking, Andy Kindler or uh, uh, Richard? What's his name? <laughs> what the fuck? What is his name? Richard Dreyfus. Yeah. What would you say? You can be honest. Well, w w is Richard Dreyfus here when I'm saying it? Well, do you find me? Why would you find me? Well, pencil? no, I need to know. I need no, to know. No, Richard Dreyfus is not here. Okay, then I can say to you then. But a younger Richard Dreyfus is kind of, is he hunky? No, he's not hunky. Never hunky. Never hunky, but you could see how some women liked him. <laughs> I'm worried now about how Richard Dreyfus's dating life. 
Don't you think of him as an old man wearing like a fishing hat now or something crazy? No. I think of him as the guy in The Graduate going, should I, should I call the cops? I'll call the cops. What movie is that? He's in The Graduate. Oh, that's right. That graduate. I love when he's looking for the he's looking for the, the guy who's the boyfriend of the woman that he's the daughter of Mrs. Robinson. And he, and, he, and the guy goes, so, I don't know where the make out. I don't know where the make out king is. Well, if you see the make out king, could you tell? You must tell me to never recall lines from movies <laughs> again. It's the stupidest I thing. I thought it was self I can't. But... T- I know. And I dive in every. I go. I, I go on the way here. I probably go. You know what? If things go get slow. I do one of my great my recaps of other junk. people's jokes. <laughs> no, other it's either it, you know I'm telling people about a movie I like, a book I've read, right. comedian. It's always horrible. I can't spin a yarn that. Well, there was that like, time that the uh, that the hockey game ended when you were in the car. <laughs> There's that story. You happy with yourself with that kind of laugh? Yeah, I kind of am. Okay, I'm playing along with this. I'm my yeah, feelings really are very are. hurt. <laughs> You're like but I'm Mr. Playing yes with- and. Oh, I lost an award this weekend. Oh, right. How was the uh, ceremony? Well, every I don't have to tell people what this is. It's the it's L.A. Web Fest. The Webbies? The no, 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 no. Yeah. It's called the... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something I've heard of. <laughs> this was right. the L.A. Web Fest. Okay. Ninth year. They claim it's the biggest. And um, Who would, would argue? Who would argue? The Webbies. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to three screen. I went to the screening of my own thing. Yeah. How were you? Well, did they ask I you, to, did, did they I, ask it, you it, to ADR it before they showed it? <laughs> it's a show's called But I'm Chris Jericho. It's on the web. And, and and my friend Shannon, who's like works at this company, who was like a producer, executive of the Inside Productions, she was coming down from Canada. I mean, we had her. From, now, Chris Jericho was a, a nominee, but he's not. He's in Florida. Nobody, I think. So much information I don't, I don't need. Yeah, but you'll love it now. <laughs> I don't know who would fly in for this. That's what I would be nervous about. Yeah. To me, if it had been in like Downey, it would have been close. <laughs> you know, if you don't live in L.A., it sounds cool to say I'm flying to L.A. for the Web Awards. These people did. These people came from, our, from, from Australia and they won. But I don't know how the voting. I, I assume the voting was rigged. It's you know miles what? traveled, generally. What's that? Miles traveled. <laughs> you know how I, when I f- decided that I was ripped off? When you didn't when win. When I lost. <laughs> yes. Now, here's the thing. You tell yourself, I've never been nominated for anything. You have been nominated. Not really, no. For an Emmy or something, right? No. Okay, I got, this is the first thing I've ever been nominated. Emmy adjacent, but never. <laughs> Mostly Emmy immune. Not daytime Emmys. Not daytime Emmys. I've never been nominated for anything. Before. I won the, uh, my, my movie won the f- film festival. Well, that's what I'm trying to get into that kind of situation. Winning things, festivals. That's good. Now you have that. My wife said to me, Susan, she said, if you had won... I would have argued with you about putting it on your resume. <laughs> she would have been all over. That's a nice bit of perspective. <laughs> a little bit too much perspective. <laughs> so I went there, and, you know, it was one of these things where, do I bring a jacket? Do I not bring a jacket? You wore a jacket. I saw I wore your a post online about yeah. it. Yeah. And now Shannon was in that picture. Uh-huh. And once it got to my category, or near it, my palms were sweaty. Really? And I was like... I was actually embarrassed. I started to go, it's going to be embarrassing me for me to walk up and get an award here at the LA Web Fest. And then I lose. Lose. And all of a sudden, I'm as depressed as if it was a real award show. Well, I mean, it's good. It, it, what it does is it helps you prepare to lose on bigger award shows. <laughs> well, it made me think, and this is absolutely true, it made me think of Buddhism and even though it's a ridiculous event, and even though I shouldn't have been upset for a second, I was able to pull out of it by saying, in Buddhism, you try not to get attached to the results. So, for example, what if I had won the L.A. Web Fest Best Supporting Actor? You don't think that I would have been gone by the time I got to the freeway? <laughs> I'd be looking for another uh, sugar high? You would have gotten one more little bump from the tweet about it. Yeah, one more tweet. and One more, yeah. I would have tweeted about it. Right. Yeah, great. So I was able to let go. I was able to admit to myself I was disappointed, and I was able to let go of it. But I don't know if I can do this with real things <laughs> that well, really yeah, have high good. stakes. It's good. You know, you got to start at a somewhere. Certain, you got to start somewhere. Don't you think? It is very even embarrassing. If, even though. if you have to summon Eastern philosophy <laughs> <laughs> to get through it. Summon it. 
Well, it is embarrassing. I used to be one of those people when I was a kid who said I would never go to a award. I don't even know why would I say I wasn't going to an award show. Yeah, that's who was inviting me. Right, but I always thought I'd be like Marlon Brando. You're pre souring your grapes. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going there. (laughs) In fact, I used to tell myself I wouldn't do commercials. I wouldn't do. I mean, a lot of those things didn't happen because I'm a bad actor. Right, but. I used to tell myself, why was I arguing with myself about whether I would do something commercial? Yeah, the really the greatest test of that, that you failed, <laughs> was being a judge on Last Comic Standing. What's, what's, what are you saying? I'm saying the test that you failed <laughs> in terms of I would never do that. Oh, I did fail that. Yeah. But did I ever specifically say I would never do it, or did I just put down the show for you years? You just put down the show with for years. With an attitude of Mr. <laughs> yes, Big Shot. Yes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let my dog be no, on that show. I mean, right. It, you know why I wouldn't let my dog be on that show? Because that's America's Got Talent. <laughs> 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 do you know that the dog won two years in a row? I did not. The dog won Britain's Got Talent and America's Got Talent. Wow. So what does that make me conclude? There's no talent. Why am I, again, that's for my act. It's okay. crazy with the weather. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I happen to feel that. Don't bullshit me later on. And okay. I guess it's me, the new salty language. This show is fucking, I hit it out of the park. And now, you, and now you're going to say, you too, you too. No, no, don't make it look like I'm just because I'm a narcissistic prick. Don't make it look like that's what I'm doing. Even though I have this need to be the best. No, not really. I'm over it now. But you, don't tell me that you couldn't find anything. I don't know how long we've gone. Well, not that long. Not so 30 long. minutes at least. <laughs> yeah. Dynamite. Yeah. Don't mess it up either. Don't over edit it. I, want, I guess I'm looking to be punched in the face. Okay. <laughs> right? Okay, well, you've come <laughs> to the right place. So what else, what else went on? Because I lost an award. That's the first award I've ever... It was, and it was at uh, uh, Sony. It was at... On a lot. This, yeah. Uh, and... It just seemed like it That's added to the that, fantasy of the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> was it being televised? Or, I mean, rec- <laughs> <laughs> rec- I didn't really mean te- televised so much as broadcast on the web. <laughs> oh, Josh. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't think so. I didn't see a camera there. I saw a band. Yeah. The guy who gave out, who emceed the awards, he was filling in. So you have to be mindful of that. He but was he filling kept, in like at the last minute? At the last minute, I think. Okay. And he kept saying, I'm doing good so far, right? Like that kind of thing. Right. Sound like me doing the... Because the guy who was supposed to be there got a real gig? <laughs> <laughs> I had my... I actually... You want to see? You want to hear my speech that I prepared? Yes. Okay. Fuck yes. <laughs> okay. I didn't really prepare a speech. Okay. Uh, first of all... I'd like to thank Insight Productions, Shannon Farr, the CBC, Craig Brown and Bob Kerr, who created the show, and my pal Gary Rideout uh, from, uh, from the Comedy Bar in Toronto. And of course, you always have to thank, I would like, the, sh- na- the name of the show is, but I'm Chris Jericho. I would like to thank Chris Jericho, who, without whom, the show would be called, but I'm. That was the joke I wrote. Uh, okay. But I'm. Would you have laughed at that joke? Yes. Because uh, you would have thought I was an amateur. Why not? <laughs> no, yeah, I think it would have worked. And, uh, and then the only other thing I was going to say, because some people kept saying, play me off with something. It was so weird. The band actually played the People's Court song, which I was delighted by. Yeah. Ba bum bump. So I, I was going to say, play me off to that. So in my mind, I'd already fast forwarded. I'm going to, who else could win this thing? There is good news, though, Josh, that a friend of mine won the uh, category. Good. And his name is Brent Weinbach, who you know, right? He's a great comic. I know the name. Okay, he won. But what's kind of depressing about it, that he won? What would be depressing about Brent Weinbach, who I think is a wonderful actor, winning, and me not winning? What would be depressing? Uh, That it wasn't you. He didn't show up, okay? (laughs) He didn't show up. And there was even an implication in the materials that came along with the uh, web fest. Yeah. You increase your chances by showing up. I came to the screening and the award ceremony. It did not help me win. I think it's a scam of some type. <laughs> did you pay for a ticket? Uh, Sh- a Shannon Farr from Insight paid for my ticket. Now, three we took three people to go to a screening. Guess how much that was? Three people for screening. $90. $15. This is why I'm <laughs> telling you the LA Web Fest. Is, I, will, I think it's having some downtime. 
But the award ceremony was forty dollars. When you're a nominee for an award and you have to pay admission. Oh, people know that this that's, clearly. That's like that's clearly like acting school. Well, the red carpet. Like the red carpet had plastic. modeling agency kind of shit. <laughs> they had a red carpet. Yeah. Where they had you were, fake cameras. Were, I was about to I say where fake cameras. You're welcome to make do selfies on the on the red carpet. <laughs> oh, that's too close to the bone for me not to get upset about. Yeah. So that was that. Now, how about you? There must have been something. First of all, your uh, uh, did people know about about what? Clyde, your doggy. Your doggy is feeling better. Dog is is in great shape right all now. All right, so, yeah. and so they should stop sending. The treats to you and the, all the things to the... What yes. have they been sending? Flowers? I'm telling you, Josh's two dogs, if you get a chance to buy his property, <laughs> which he encourages. I'm not including the dogs in the property. They are the cutest dogs, and you oh, said... Oh, you said come buy. I thought you said buy the property. <laughs> no, no, no. Are you selling? Why is it when you're a homeowner, which I am not a homeowner, I'm a condo owner. Why Still do I home. have all it's these... It's not a house. It's not a house. Every day... Bruce Schwanitzky has sold out every condo in the valley. He knows he can sell your unit. What is, is that what you get at your house, too? I get a lot, yeah. And so does that – it gave me the feeling, is it a buyer's market or a seller's market now? Uh, it's a seller's market right now. Right, but the problem is I could sell my condo, I bet, for profit. For Probably. What, what am I going to do then? Where do I exactly. go? Exactly. How do I handle it? Are the prices <laughs> – if it's a seller's market, that means when you buy your house – you will pay more money for it. Like I said, I'm going to buy my, sell yes. my house. You sell your house, then you become a buyer, and it's not your market anymore. Then it's their market. Right. Unless I go to, how far out will I have to go out till I had a uh, so low mortgage, I could tell every, all the relatives and everybody how great I do, I'm doing. How far? Like uh, Carpenteria. <laughs> what, what do I have to live in? Rancho Cucamonga, cha-cha? What are you, the mayor of Oxnard? If there isn't a, a Dennis Miller bobblehead doll, <laughs> I think there, I think someone gave it to me. No, they gave me a pulled thing. Yeah. But he's already gone, cha-cha. Choo-choo. <laughs> he has made the conscious decision to get back in the game. That you know, right? Well, it, clearly. Because of his bright Bart column. Bright, 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 bright. <laughs> So he's tweeting like an idiot. So he's trying to come. He must be. He must be so depressed. I think so. So how did your career go? Tell me how. What happened. Oh, you were on Saturday Night Live. You hosted. Weekend. I was. I was on Saturday Night Live. That's great. I was the host of Weekend Update. You might remember that, Chooch. Oh yeah, I thought you were great. And didn't you even probably know? the best host? I thought you were wonderful. Uh, thank you. And then, <laughs> I love that black and white special you did. That was probably my best special. A lot of people say that was my best work. So, I was pretty brilliant there. So you come off of that. I heard you also even had a, a short-lived It was sort of the Citizen Kane of specials. And you then can't you, walk out on me. I'm Charles Foster Kane. Bang. So, okay, that all was great. It was so all now, very great. Great. So great. then well, how did you parlay that? Let's. What, how did you parlay all that great stuff? What are you doing now? Well, I'm on top of the world, babe. Really? I'm back in brent brent I do, I do a thing every Wednesday. Where? I remember. That's a very, isn't that a, like a racist uh, uh, alt-right um, publication? It's what you see, man. Nah. It's smart, my, smart. not my thing. <laughs> it's not. I my, thought it my thing isn't racist at all. How do you associate yourself with these a racist party like the, the Republicans, but then you say you're not racist? How does that work? Because it's Miller time. <laughs> I'm remember. Do you know that you're not I'm even, the brand, babe. What's the who? I'm the brand. You uh, Dennis Miller. Wherever I go, it's Miller time. It's Miller time. <laughs> it can be on NBC. It can be on... I will tell you that Josh is not even trying with this, in, uh, with this impression. <laughs> and he still is a better Dennis Miller than Dennis Miller. You'd rather have me in your home, I assure you. Babe. <laughs> Oh, it's a wonderful time period for everything. And Roseanne, I'm, I, uh, everyone... Roseanne uh, finally came to the right side of the history, babe. She, you know the thing, people, she's, R, she's RTing. She's RTing all these right-wing MAGA people who love her show. How do you uh, live with yourself? <laughs>
Seriously. I'm not watching that show anymore. Have you been watching it? No. I don't care about it. No, I don't either. I don't want to see both sides represented ever I, again. You know, it's just I stopped watching it well, when be- it would, well before the end of its run right, the first and time. What happened to the original Roseanne? Why did you stop watching it? Cause it started to suck it, when she became uh, the Ar- when she flew to another planet. That that didn't help, but I was I was long gone by that point. Okay, so now she comes back. I who watches it. a fucking sitcom for nine years or whatever? I tried to watch it, and I loved it a certain time period of it, just like I loved. I loved almost all of Seinfeld, although I started to get tired of it towards the end. It wasn't as good. But the point is, is... Um, What's the point? I, gee, gee. <laughs> you forgot the point. I can I did. tell. You can tell. But you think my... Roseanne my, is what you're talking about. Roseanne. Hey, choo-choo. So Roseanne now... I've talked about this before, right? How she claims it's a character, but it's not a character. You can't be the person... I just happened to put the character of the exact horrible human being I've turned into. And I'm telling you, I liked, I loved Roseanne. I'm not, I'm not even saying this it's as a joke. It's me without money. <laughs> is that what you think it is? I think so. You think she lost all her money? No, I think she probably has money. Oh, oh, the character, the character is me without money. Yeah. But the character, here's what really bothers me. The character back then didn't have money, but it wasn't a right wing blue collar family. No. So. I, I just find it to be very disturbing. Very disturbing. Well, yeah. I'm over it. <laughs> so now you have been watching the basketball, and it's exciting, right? Is it good it this is. year? It's been good so far. The first round was quite good. And do you think no one can beat Golden State? What's your prediction? I think Houston could probably beat Golden State. Is Houston that has the big that star on it, right? It has right. a couple. No, but who's the guy who's like James that? Harden? Yeah, isn't he considered the best in the league right now? Or, But doesn't he mock the players? Like if someone falls down, he goes, Oh, you fell down. Oh, and then he puts it in their face. You saw what I'm talking about, right? Don't treat me like I'm crazy. When he broke the ankles of the opposing... Uh, no, when the, was that what it's called? That's what they call it. Yeah. And the guy was on the floor. He kind of like took his time with taking the shot. Well, yeah. I don't do that. That's not how... <laughs> you know, you're not a showboat. Also, when you play with me, don't bring any of that... Garbage Defense. in my house. <laughs> so that's good. How about OKC? Uh, they have been eliminated. I thought they were starting to be good. Uh, you think it's they stopped being good. Do <laughs> you think it's because people don't want to live in Oklahoma City? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It's one of the best places I've... Go Norman. Norman, Oklahoma. Home of the... Of Oklahoma the fighting Normans. <laughs> the what? Of the fighting Normans. <laughs> Okay, so... Talking to the mic. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Oh, by the way, Josh, yeah. congratulations on horning in on my movie. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That was a bold move by me, wasn't it? Well, let it? me tell you something. There's going to be nothing I'm going to look more forward to on my four days of shooting in New Orleans in the uh, Everglades or whatever they have there to take time off and do our practice. <laughs> it's going to be... Co- he went right for he'll do he went, he was very excited about it about did you he, coming did he contact no you? he hasn't contacted yeah, but, uh, so. but I, <laughs> <laughs> he was a contacted but he in, well on I'm Twitter, sure he'll be seen, thrilled after making a co-star in his movie that you had to ADR every line of your dialogue no no no, no that's <laughs> oh you're saying the future is that what the future holds <laughs> yeah it's not uh, how do you know that it, there's could be a chance all of a sudden I wake up tomorrow I'm the greatest actor in the world <laughs> could be. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, he posted that we had that talked about the movie, and I said, "Hey, give me a part, and I'll we'll do a thought spiral from the set." Yeah, I and, think that would be good. And he went deal. I haven't talked to him since. Yeah, that, but. and if he doesn't make a deal, don't it's, you know, well, you know, don't come whining at me. I promise. I promise I won't. Um. Yeah, but he's. Uh, it's going to happen soon. I think. I don't know. I just don't believe anything is going to happen. Yeah. Are the shooting days scheduled? No, end of May. End of May. Gotcha. That's going to be it. But uh, Alex texted me, and I think this is actually, uh, finally I got excited about an idea. Yeah. I never thought about the fact that the comedy lab, right? Yeah. Would be a perfect place. And I've seen podcasts there. Yeah. So we may be, uh, we could be doing that this summer. It's something so you, for called, the... you called him out on the air last week? Yeah. And boom. Boom. I did lie to him a little bit today. I said I would email her and get her. I would say I would get her email right back to you. Yeah. I don't do that. I would with you. I would because I'm frightened of you. Right. 
Normally that would bother me. It works to my advantage though. So let's keep it. Let's <laughs> oh, keep it would it. bother you if you were perceived as being uh, uh, threatening. Yeah, that's not what I'm going for. But I don't think in normal. I will reap the benefits nonetheless. But you're tall guys. I don't think anybody would mess with you in regular life. <laughs> that much. It just doesn't come up. Now, why would someone bother it? It doesn't really come up that much. No one would bother a Jew. Exactly. Historically, never. <laughs> We, do you think we could we could pass as nuns? As nuns. So I wrote that down. Josh is in my movie again. The mic would be good. I, I wrote that down. Josh is in my movie, <laughs> and the only thing I have left. Don't walk around calling it your movie on set. That's my first tip. For yeah, you. That's terrible. I already <laughs> feel like an idiot. Um, I had one podcast topic to talk about. And that that is that I'm starting to overcome my fear of acting like a uh, overcome my fear of of uh, acting like a normal adult and answering emails. Yeah, uh, I might even answer the phone sometimes. It's a new world for me. I like this gentleman who had written a very an email that affected me. It is a gentleman, I think, right? Yeah, that I answered tonight. I've been meaning to answer him. For a long time, and I started to take a guilt shame thing on it. Yeah. But uh, I I had it in my mind. I want to be I want to be doing these things uh, better. Right. But then I have a terrible habit of doing this. I do it with Susan all the time, huh? What are you thinking of that dishwasher being unloaded, huh? Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Hey, remember when I used to never ch- change light bulbs? I changed the light bulb. What do you think? Not it's not too shabby. Right? right, pretty pretty good life living with me. Yeah. <laughs> so I always want to come over and go, huh? Did I not answer those emails? Yeah, two is what I go. <laughs> now what's up? With me? What, what is up? The with way me? you answered those two emails was. Uh, oh, you see, that's it was thing. overwhelming to me. I thought it was three. Okay, fine. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I think uh, it was two. I'm working. I'm halfway through my third reply. Okay. Somebody wrote a very long thing, and yeah. I know you told me. You pay a guy seven dollars an hour, and he answers your uh, email. Yeah, I can't afford that. <laughs> I like the idea that I can't afford it. Now, what's been happening with you? Anything new in you in in the Josh Elvis Weinstein? Is the is anything selling like hotcakes flying off the shelves? Your your comedy movie? No. Uh, but I think is there something on the horizon we can look forward to where you gonna come down and go? No. Wish me luck. No. How is your mood in- internally? Um, tumultuous. Okay, here's what I'm getting the sense that you're. If now tell me, I'm I'm almost always wrong. Okay, my sense is you don't want to talk that much about stuff that happened to you because either I've ruined that for everybody by coming in like a bull, but you <laughs> also have a look that says to me we might be going to question soon. I'm trying to think if we should, since this is the one year show. Oh yeah, we've been trying to think. Should we thinking. should we do some one year ish stuff? Maybe. We so should. I was thinking, let's do a quiz here. Okay. This is uh, which country are we bigger in? Okay, but when you say which country are we bigger in, this is based on download number of downloads per country. Doesn't count America though, right? We're not doing our big our big four would be, would uh, be America, U.S. U.S. Canada, Canada England. Yeah. And Australia. Yeah. Those are the big, by far the biggest. Wow. I love Australia. We should, I should be going over there more. Yes, you totally the, should. So, so far, I'm one for okay. one. Are we bigger in China or India? I would guess India. You're wrong. It's China. Well, that's a trick question. Then, isn't it? <laughs> Indians, the Indians uh, speak well, English more than the Chinese. Oman or the United Arab Emirates? United Arab Emirates. Oman, two to one. What are there, three people literally, in one? <laughs> literally two to one. <laughs> two people in one and one person in the other? Two in Oman, one in the UAE. Now, these numbers you're telling me about, what does each number this represent? Is the num- Thousands this is of- the number of actual downloads so they each, since, they- since like December of this past year so they when, represent they a million- o- when they switched over the stat system. It's kind of all. What's the stat system now? It's just a more true <laughs> system oh. that they have. God damn it. Norway or Sweden? I would say Sweden, but it's probably Norway. No, it's Sweden. Two to one. 326 downloads in Sweden, 157 in Norway. I literally thought you meant two to one. That's what it was in Oman. That's what it was in Oman and UAE. It was literally two to one. Germany or France? Uh, 
I'm always going to say France because I can't in my entire lifetime have a, a positive answer to any question that is Germany. Well, you will now because we have several hundred people have downloaded us. In, in Germany. Germany? Yes. How about France? They're too above it? Fewer. Fuck you, Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey or Morocco? I hope Morocco. It's Turkey. Turkey. I mean, Turkey is not having a good time period. No. They sent but, some people here to beat up people. Uh, Italy or Spain? Italy. Spain. Wow. Thanks, and. What you, <laughs> thank you, Anthony Bourdain. Uh, Japan or Brazil? Japan is always ahead of anything. Way more in Japan. Yeah. Especially when they're talking about Andy Kindler uh, production. Philippines or Indonesia? Philippines. Yes, by one. By one. I mean, I'm guessing with these. I don't want to be big in Indonesia. Isn't that where you, if you think about spitting, they put you away for 12 years? No, that's Singapore. Oh, oh well, Indonesia is supposed to be a picnic? In Malaysia, we had two, two downloads. I can't, how would you even, are we paying, let me ask you a question, are we paying more to have uh, results from Malaysia come in? Because I don't want, want that. Just stay domestically, if it's cheaper, Google Analytics. Okay, well, that's the game. <laughs> that's, oh, well, you have no more, how about other, uh, 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 any memories of the last, now, can you believe we've made it one year, Josh? One it's year. To, it's hard to believe, Andy. One year. When you started, I did think we'd make it one year. Yeah. I always think if I'm going to start something, I want it to be good. Yeah. But I didn't want it to I didn't want to put pressure on myself. And you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's amazing? It's so hard to even think about because of all the things that have happened over the year, right, Josh? There's no packages, Andy. There's no clips. <laughs> oh. Should we right now do live sketches and then go to them? So. Remember you know the what time? I found I found the other day I was going looking for a document in an old hard drive that was a hard Is that drive. how they say it these days? Uh, yes, it was a like a hard drive that I had rescued from an old laptop. Wow! And uh, I found like a trove of music shit. Of That's great. Various things. So. First of all, why are you giving the impression? I don't. I don't think of you as somebody who takes a thing out of a thing. You take apart a computer to get the hard drive. I had a person at oh, okay. the computer That's shop do better. it That's for better. me. That's better. Yeah, thank you. Ask me about my new uh, air conditioner. How's it going? Very nice. I have a Nest thermostat. Do you? Josh. Yeah, that's very... You know what that is? That has an app. I has an app. So, for example, let's say I'm in New York, and I go, oh, I want it to be cooler. I want to not. fuck with my wife from New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those pranks are going to be so much fun. So much fun. I'm going to gaslight my wife from New York. Literally with gas. With gas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I don't say that. What if something happens to my wife, and she goes... Oh, let's say my wife has a gas accident now. Yeah. Uh, which, where somehow she's exposed to poison gas. They'll come after me. That's my. This is how you they, know. They're going to come after you anyway. If you're that's the thing. That's how you know I have OCD. When the worst, when the first thing you think about when losing a loved one is will it they're depend gonna on you? They're going to blame me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, and you know why I don't want that, Josh? I'm already going to be mourning the death of my loved one. I got to do that in jail. Come on. I don't want it. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm into what I was going to say was I'm into these um, true. I'm starting to get. I hope I don't get too far into it. But true crime podcast and stuff like that. Yeah. There's a guy from Australia called Kais Files. Kais, Kais Files. Kais Files. I can't understand one word he's saying. And his name is Kais Files. Yeah. And he did a thing on the, the Phillip Island. He's the case of, that's not a knife. <laughs> is, who's that? This is a knife. Is that from Crocodile Dundee? Yes. I can't believe that after all these years you wouldn't update your Australian to Leighton Hewitt jokes. Right. Or, uh, <laughs> uh, I got nothing. We have nothing? Jacko, the Energizer guy. <laughs> Is he the guy from the commercials yeah. who would do the thing? Oh, yeah, I can't believe it. Well, anyway, this guy's good, though, this true crime. Do you listen to any of those true crime things? Are you telling me I'll, I'll no, I don't. very quick? No, I don't. Okay, do you watch, do, me and the wife watch Dateline, like, uh, unbelievable. We love to watch those kind of shows. Yeah. And Allison does as well. I do oh, not. Oh, you do not? I do not. So you don't like Columbo? Uh, well, that's not a true crime show, is it? But you like, but that means you like detective shows? Not so much. So what happens? It always you? feels like TV writing to me. Well, 
Then what do you go to different? What are you watching? You can't. She just. You can't make her watch the basketball playoffs. No, we don't watch anything together. That's not right. It's totally right. Okay, so where are you? Where are you ensconced normally? I'm generally in my office. Your office is on the second floor, right? Yes. Which you won't even allow me. One time I said, "Can I at least go up there and see what's happening?" He said, "Get the hell! You pulled me down. You stick to Clyde. Stay away from the island, David." <laughs> is that from? Uh, that was that was Kate Chris, Fear. No, that was Chris Elliott doing Marlon Brando. On David Letterman in, like, 1984. <laughs> he used to say... I got a lot. Stay away from the island, David. <laughs> and he used to say... He used to call Paul Schaefer Ringo, which I love. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Ringo. Oh, Chris Elliott. There's nobody funnier than him. There is nobody funnier. Uh, well, it's so been what, quite a year. It has been quite a year. What, uh, what's your takeaway from... A do, year? A year of doing this shit. Well, my takeaway is... That, unlike any other thing I've done, well, unlike stand-up comedy, it's hard to get a, a read on what on what's happening. Like I can't gauge the progress except by what people say, right? You know, so it's like. But my goal was to have the show be what some people are say that it is for the it cheers them up, helps them while they're shopping. I don't. That's what I'm looking for. That's what that's what podcasts help me with. Right. And that's what I want. Just a, a thing that gets you. You know, when you're low and you're watching too much uh, uh, CNN or whatever, that this can pick you up. And for a while during the year, I thought we would be. I would be Mr. Spiritual. Yeah. You know, and I would be going through all of my struggles. Right. Live on air with the people. Right. But it's so boring what I have. OCD. I've got OCD. I have ADHD. Nobody cares. They don't care about like Richard Lewis when he talk about therapy. <laughs> Did you see uh, the Foster Brooks clip that Richard Lewis posted? <laughs> no, it was pretty good. What it is? Was, what uh, is it? It was uh, it was Foster Brooks uh, roasting uh, Rickles, <laughs> and his whole premise. He did the drunk thing. He did the drunk thing, but his singular premise for the entire five minutes was I'm fucking your wife. <laughs> it was all jokes about about fucking his wife. I'm having it to court away. I'm having it to court. We I'm enjoyed you on a tonight show we were watching together. <laughs> it was sad when it ended. Because we knew you were coming home. <laughs> now Rickles, But it was five solid minutes of, I, of, I'm, of I'm fucking your wife jokes. And he loved it. Right? He did not veer from the premise. And he was not laughing no, like a maniac. He was laughing like a maniac. Everyone if he was filmed in the same room. But it was just unbelievable that he just that that to me is commitment. <laughs> if you can do five minutes of, my, of I'm fucking your wife to your face. That is brave. Yeah. I'm fucking your wife. He I'm never saying, said that. He never said that I'm fucking oh, your no, wife. Oh no, but the but, implication was yeah. now, doesn't he have like a do I know this from you telling me, or that he has like an English accent, or he has a no, an elitist accent? It's not elitist. It's just sort of pompous. Where did you see that? You saw, I saw that. him when he was talking to Johnny Carson, and he said, "Well, the way I came up with the inebriated character Jolly was I would study many of the Nedwells who would come into the local." Br uh, I ran out of material yeah. on that bit. <laughs> you weren't doing the right character anyway. So. Oh, well, how would you say? You well, John, I do the uh, the drunk when uh, I'm on stage. It's so terrible. But, uh, you've been very good to me, John. Oh, because the, that was a thing where he wasn't doing the character on the panel. Right. He should have been kicked out. Exactly. Did Johnny Carson look like this is great, uh, be peeking behind the scenes? <laughs> no. He, was, he did not. How can you do a cat? How can you be Pee Wee Herman? But Johnny was excited because he had sort of broken him on the show. Oh, well, that's good then. So then so maybe the, it was a very the, special yeah. episode of. I haven't been watching it. Because it was like, and uh, I, hear, I hear you sing as well. We'll have you back to do that. That's a lie. He's not going to have Foster <laughs> Brooks back. I don't think back. they did. But who knows? People would have been on like 16 times a year back that's then. That's true. Who, hey, who didn't sing back then? Who exactly. didn't have some kind of a lounge act? Exactly. Everybody. Even did. you did. When you're smiling, when you're smiling. Why are you smiling, people? Ah, <laughs> this guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, do you want to hear one of the songs I found in the Trove? Oh, please do. I, uh, this was... Uh, if you have other stuff you found in the Trove. I found a lot of shit. Do you want to hear... I should probably only play my songs. Um, do you want to hear 
uh, the one that's sort of Elvis costello or the one that's sort of Paul simon <laughs> I'll go with Paul Simon. Okay. So this was uh, this was the Depreciators. This was me, Dave Gruber Allen. Oh, okay. My wife, of course. Oh, cool. And Thomas Chan. Why do I have this voice now? And this was the, that was the we for a long for like almost a couple of years we had like Tuesday night music here at the house. Uh, so this is uh, me on guitar, Tommy Chan on bass. Um, Gruber, I think, on Shaker. And then everyone's singing back up. Cool. And it's in my living room. Well, the music room. I'm excited about that. That was fantastic. I was expecting, I don't know what I was expecting, but I was expecting, I said, I'm going to, uh, what if I don't like the song? I said to myself. Well, there's always that risk. There's always that risk. But um, I played with you before, so uh, I don't know. It's, you know what? I start to feel like how I would feel if I was playing you, and I was just I may start to get sick to, to my stomach before right. I heard it. But it was fantastic. And the harmonies, Allison Gruber and, and Gruber. And Tommy, yeah. That is some good singing. You guys were like the Beach Boys, or I mean, you had that sound. I mean, I love that. I can sometimes sing harmonies, but you guys have uh, really uh, that, that's a cool sound. I'm, I want to I want to get in the inebriators business, <laughs> the depreciators business. Yes, I like that name too. Thank you. It's like a real estate I rock know, band. I know it's bra- brazen to actually play it on the show. I'm glad you played it, but it's. Uh... It's our show, so <laughs> I know that's not that's not brazen at all. In fact, if you want, do you want to play the other one, or you want to hold off on the other one? Do you want to hear the I other want one? To hear the other one. All right. There's some good uh, instrumentalism on this one. Cool. Uh, this was this is uh, me on guitar again. Tommy on guitar. Thomas Chan, Gruber on piano, and then everyone singing. That's again. the thing too. It sounds like a full thing. Well, we played together Sweet. a lot. You so, playing acoustic? I'm playing acoustic on this. And there's an intro by uh, that Tommy and uh, Gruber sort of improvise. It's not Los Angeloso Mysterioso? Kind of. (laughs) That's his 
excuse for not knowing what to play now if you wouldn't mind. I love it. That was great. And not only that, uh, your voice, I, I, your voice is sexy. I can't. Why, you know what I'm saying I, I'm all of a sudden. I can't. I, I mean, I'm I sweating now, Josh. Ooh. I'm sweating now. I don't know if it's because my hand is on your knee or that's not my popcorn. <laughs> but uh, I mean, the girls. I mean, you're married, but wasn't it trouble with the ladies coming up to you during the gigs? No, they like it when I beat them off with a stick. So it all worked out. And the thing is, you know what's interesting to me. I think it was a great song. And also, I've known Gruber so long yeah. that Gruber is like a beach boy to me in terms of <laughs> being used to his voice. I love his voice. Yes. Uh, and Allison's voice. I've been hearing for so long. So it's like I'm hearing my favorite singers. Nice. So I think we should make I think now maybe we should make that make an album or something. You think? Well, why would you want spiral. to play with me, though? You, not, uh, I would not, play with you. I yeah, mean, it wouldn't be good, you, but we'd play. What? <laughs> I'm not saying it would what? be like gel. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear my thin skin impression? Th I'm thin, thin, thin skin guy? Sure. Hey, you want to get together and jam sometime? Forget oh. it. <laughs> it's not really. It was not bad was for good. in the moment. No, it was good. Yes, and. <laughs> <laughs> I think those songs are great. I think you guys, you know, and also, also Tommy Chan. I've been with Tommy Chan in many situations, because I think I've either, I don't know if I've ever played with you guys or just sang with you guys. Did I play guitar? You came when I did uh, the Stink to Soleil show. <laughs> you, uh, what you, did I do? You sang with your sister. Yeah, this is unbelievable. My sister has an amazingly great, I love my sisters. My sister, when she was 16 years old, wrote, 17 years old, wrote four of the best songs I've ever heard. And... uh she doesn't write that much. Larry. Now. Larry. Larry. You can't go Don't Larry. Don't waste. No, Larry's my father, so you can't oh, have sorry. Janet writing a song <laughs> about Larry. Larry, I told you you're my dad. 
We can't date Larry. We can't Just date. give me the keys. He's the, I want the keys to the car, Larry. I'm not going to make go further with a song that implies there was incest. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I am very happy about that. Now, then my wheels start turning. Yeah. What am I going to bring in? Boom. Well, that was how am I going to one up this That's what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, that's what I'm and, trying to say. Well, but I'm not trying, and I wasn't trying to steal I the thunder from Karen. I, well, I swear to God. <laughs> well, Karen, I, just, first I found of all, this. I just found these uh, MP3s today, and I didn't. I f- kind of forgot they existed. What did you record on? Just that was just around some then. Some sort of digital recorder. Yeah. Obviously, it's not a great recording, but I think it sounds good because you know why? I do you know that I spent a thousand dollars in nineteen eighty or seventy nine on a four track cassette studio? Yeah, that I'm still paying off. If you think about it in real days, like a Fostex or a no, it was TIAC. a TIAC. Yeah. Tascam 244. Nice. So what I was saying was, oh, you know what would be nice? Four separate tracks on a cassette tape. What was that? <laughs> that can't have been the answer ever to anything. I used my four track. You had a cassette studio too? Yeah. Wow. Was it a TAC or was it a Fostex? It was a Fostex. That was, those were better, actually. I actually bought it from Hodgson for like 100 bucks. Mm. I always thought if I ever could do multi-tracking, which it, I should be able to do a garage band, right? Easily. Yeah. I would just sit down and jam with myself all night, every night. Yeah. It has not happened. Not so much. Yeah. Not so much. Although I do like jamming. So I think I have to somehow hitch my wagon to your train. Absolutely. What? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's go to questions. Don't say I'm kind it, of embarrassed. I'm embarrassed I played the music. Oh, no, no, no. You can't be. I'm, I'm telling bit, you. I'm telling you. Bit. You should not be embarrassed. And I thought it was great. And I'm telling you, I'm, I would. Uh, you should not be embarrassed. Right. I think it's I one of the themes of... Look, I don't want the listeners now to send their goddamn songs in that we have to play their songs <laughs> every week. You know what I'm saying? So keep it down a little bit. But no, this is a podcast. I've talked about how I used to hate myself when I played music. So I want, I mean, the fact that you brought that in there, that's pretty brave, and it sounded great. Well, so, thank you. You know, now now I know you told me you want to turn this into the... Uh, it's uh, show and tell. Show and tell Talent show. night. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> yeah. what is, um, wow. All right. We got a big load of questions. Hey, did my tweeting about it help? Uh, it didn't no. hurt. <laughs> ho, ho. Uh, Andrew Dempsey wants to know what's Josh's other podcast called. It's uh, The Edge Show with Mark Thompson at edge-show.com. Why don't you just say you want to uh, promote your other show instead of making up a fake uh, listener? This is my new character, love it or hate it. I know you hate it. Hate it. it. Uh, Kellyanne Conway West. Th- is that Kellyanne Conway? No, and it's not Kanye West. Oh, I think that's a good that's a good combo. It's a combination. Kelly and Conway West. With Andy's impending Hollywood breakout role, how will he hand her a Foster Brooks level of fame? <laughs> that is the best backhanded slam. That's pretty good, right? Because it was Foster Brooks good, It was a really funny slam. Well, you know I was mocking Foster Brooks like ha ha imagine. I was mocking here. Foster Brooks. Imagine if my career only went as big as Foster Brooks. My career is smaller than Foster Brooks. You know that, Josh? Both of our careers are smaller than Foster Brooks' career. Absolutely. Well, what are we talking about? I've heard about? of him. I've never heard of you. <laughs> yeah, but they've heard of uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. So you are more famous than me. No one's heard of me. Why do yeah, I care? Bob's Burgers. It's Dead Bob's Burgers. No, I think I would. I know just from test marketing. Thank you, thank you. I'm that you are more famous than me. <laughs> what kind of test marketing? Did, what? Like I'll say to someone, a stranger, about the podcast, and they'll go, and they'll know they all will have heard of you. Oh my God! But then, not why me. Are you, why are you burying the lead? You should because it's up happened to like this. three times in a year. <laughs> you did see the picture of some of the spiralers, right? I did. Yeah. It was very exciting to see. Hopefully, the groups will get bigger and bigger. Hopefully it'll be. We'll have to use a panorama. I'm telling you, I have, I have good feelings about us. Not money wise or success, no, or having fun with it, right? But numbers getting better. E dog or rhino or e dog or reno? Probably, I'm guessing. Uh, says, shouldn't the person in the middle seat on a plane have both armrests? 
Also, shouldn't people exit by row and not by who jumps into the aisle first? Thirdly, am I Jewish? <laughs> well, let me say one thing that you're absolutely right about that drives my wife crazy. You're supposed to exit by row, and it's rude to start running ahead on a plane, and that does drive me nuts. So uh, what was the other two things? Oh, oh, the thing with the middle seats? Yeah. I find it's very hard to negotiate the armrest no matter where you're sitting. Absolutely. And one plane I was on... Because your arms have to go somewhere. They have to, on one plane, I think it was a Delta, they had the remote control for the TV right underneath a woman's arm who was on my hand rest. That's uncomfortable. That's uncomfortable. Yeah. I said to her, that's not my hand rest. She said, that's not my popcorn. Uh, Chris uh, Mutter says, just a little current events would help restore sanity, even if not so current. And we did a little current events this week. I, well, first of all, I think it's a good, uh, it's a good note, too. Uh, Perush says, I miss the occasional deep philosophical conversations, especially the ones from test shows 17, 34, and 51. 51 was last week. How can you miss philosophical? <laughs> was there a philosophical one there? I don't know, I guess. I know what he's I, saying, they, though. They, they, they passed through. I know what he's saying, though. I really. But it is interesting that every 17 shows exactly, we have a philosophical oh God, conversation. Like Charles Fleischer. I am, huh? Charles Fleischer used to do the thing called about Moolies. Moolies, like he was like a, a, a mathematical. Oh, uh, right. Okay. It's a schmoolie, schmash, schmash, schmoo, schmoo. Uh, so, yeah. So, every 17. So, 16 more shows. 17. And we so will have, mean, we will have, we will go deep. In episode 68, right. we're going to talk about time travel. So get your That's time machine. That's more scientific than philosophical. Hold on to your time. Oh, okay. We're going to be talking about uh, I can't think why of we failed. That's what we're going to talk about. That's what we always talk about. <laughs> we're going to talk about whether it's nihilism or nihilism. Yes, I think that's good. I watched uh, that documentary about uh, Gore Vidal and uh, Buckley <gasps> last night. Great. That was good, yeah. That was, uh, I loved it. Uh, Buckley, though, I have to say... When Buckley is putting down James Baldwin for the way he talks, yeah. I wanted to strangle that asshole. You know, when they go back and they go, oh, that William F. Buckley, those were the days of conservatives. That guy was a jerk. He was a jackass, yeah. He was a jackass. with a f He's telling James Baldwin he has an a uh, some strange accent. When this guy oh, has... Oh, if you talk that way, how am I supposed to understand you, Mr. Baldwin? I mixed it up with the other guy. Who's the other guy? <laughs> Gorbidal. No, no, there's a guy from the, well, 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 Andy. <laughs> that was Floyd the Barber. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, Mr. Buckley Jr. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> Goober says, hey. <laughs> Dr. Hey Rube says, break down the Magna Carta. Oh, that's a good Dennis Miller thing. What's your major malfunction, Magna Carta? What kind of declaration of human rights are you? Huh? I'll break you down right now. What's Magna Carta? Uh, you know what? Give me the mini Carta first. <laughs> hey, do you? Can I also have the a la carta menu? <laughs> Magna Carta, what's next? I, don't I guess know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right, now let's do the other one. The way Constitution this. of the United States of America. Right, so let's do this this way. Do yeah. you, if I had to, if, uh, Really ask you, do you know what the Magna Carta is? Would you be able to give a complete answer? I would not. I would not be able to give a complete answer, but I could give a basic answer, which is it was a, it was a document declaring uh, universal rights, mostly for, for White landholders, for barons. Oh, it was it in Italy? Oh, was it in Rome or something? Because it's No, it was, in, it was in England. So where did they get Magna and, it was and in, Carta? It was like 12... 11 or 12, 15 or something. I thought it was Italian just by Magna Carta. And it was King John had lost... Uh, and is that a real name too? King John? Yeah, okay. Yeah. He had lost uh, France, basically. He had lost Normandy to the French, to Prince Philip, King Philip. I know this because this battle was a pivotal battle. Is it the Battle of Hastings? It was the Battle of Bouvines. Was there a Battle which of Hastings? Was, which featured the descendant, which heavily featured the descendant of Michael de Bar. So my movie starts with talking about oh. this battle, which is the battle that King John lost, went back to England, weak from having lost Normandy in France, 
um, and the barons confronted him with a revolt, basically, and demanded that he sign this this document of rights afforded to them. Did he throw him out of the window? Is that another story? Where he would de... What's it called when you defenestrate? defenestrate? What is it? Yeah, that's it. Defenestrate. But that's not the same story, right? No. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, but it was the first document that actually declared some inherent human rights, essentially. So now when we broke off from, uh, uh, so in other words, one thing you can say is that you are the expert. You could be the expert guy of this podcast if, it, if the topic is something you made a documentary about. Sure. I, but you know that for that one minute, I thought you could do that with everything. Like I can't do that with everything. Can you do that with most things? The Louisiana purchase and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. You could say, what, could you say the history? The, I want to know what the history of the world. Do you know the basic history of the world and stuff like that? Of course. Is an animal is a okay? They, <laughs> a dog is an animal, right? Yes. But how about a really tiny, like one of those miniature poodles? No, no. <laughs> I That's don't know a why that makes me laugh, but it's delightful. Tommy Barcanero wants to know who's your favorite and least favorite James Bond. I'm embarrassed. I've never watched any of the movies. Have you not? No, I might want to watch them. But then wow. I don't. I think I watched Goldfinger. He's the man, the man with the Midas touch. Um, I've never seen it all the way through. I don't even understand what the movies are. Wow. Are they funny? Is that why you watch them? They're cheeky. They're cheeky. And do you watch them for the action adventure? Yeah. I mean, you watch them for what's wrong with a me plot then? that unfolds in an exciting way. This guy, what's his name? <laughs> Which guy? The new guy. Daniel Craig. I'm gonna watch him. Isn't that who it is? I think it is. Yeah. I'm not, he's not. No, there's there's fifty you could go back and watch. Well, I would say the best Bond was definitely. Uh, How would you know? <laughs> How would you fucking know? Sean Connery. Okay, sure. <laughs> then we're agreed. Roger, you gonna say Roger Corman was the best? <laughs> Roger Bond? Corman. It's Roger Moore. Yes. Sir Roger Moore. We're never going to be sir anybody. Just, uh, um, just think about that. <laughs> Have you how many honorary doctorates are they going to give us? None. Would you put this in the category of my worst uh, responses on a podcast, or would you say it's about fifty-fifty? It'll be, it'll be in the uh, low. The op, whatever the opposite of a best of show is. <laughs> this is. Well, it could be a worst of show. Yes, I think we should do that. We're not even doing the best of show, and you already have a... That's for the Patreon. And Shirley Blythe says, uh, what happened with that 90s SNL cast that they all became right-wing crazies? Well, the who else did? I mean... Uh, Victoria De Jackson. Oh, yeah. That, she did, and Dennis and, Miller did. And Rob Schneider. And Rob Schneider did. Rob Schneider recently became crazy. Uh, like, uh, like, you never knew that about him before. Right? Yeah, I guess he, he just came out recently. <laughs> Why would anybody do that? I don't know. Why would anybody come out? If you come out with these crazy right-wing views, I'm not saying there shouldn't be freedom of speech, but keep it to yourself. Keep it on the QT. And let me see. Who else? Uh, from the, Adam Sandler. I think Adam Sandler's... I get the feeling he's kind of right-wing. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't... I do. I don't get it one way or the other with him. Leno, I think of his... But he wasn't on the Saturday Night Live in the 90s. Right. Dana Carvey, I don't think is... He's apolitical. You're not going to play this game with me. Are you? <laughs> I'm doing the. I'm, I'm the only one here I'm participating. Way. You're staring at me like you don't even know what the topic is. There's no fun answer. It's kind of what John my Lovitz going. is kind of right wing. He's kind of right wing. There you go. Yeah. Good one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can't be. Can you imagine these assholes saying, "Oh, we can't be right wing." You know, they're, they're claiming they can't be right wing in Hollywood. You know what they mean? They mean they can't come up with a horrible opinion about something. Without someone telling them it's a horrible opinion. What do they want? Thank you. Vote for me. <laughs> I'm moving on. I wish you'd done it sooner. <laughs> Perush is back as the Perush. unofficial thought caddy. I'm, and I met Perush live. I know you did. As the unofficial thought caddy, I would like to point out that Andy Kindler already did the Marcus Welby impression in test show nine around the 43-minute mark prior to last week's show. <laughs> He sounds Thanks. like he's doing that that's, coding bit. That's super helpful, Bruce. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I actually knew he had done it before, but I found that calling you out saying you've done this before doesn't lend itself. Did you ever see the show Marcus Welby? <laughs> don't. <laughs> okay. The only reason why I didn't do it was because you said don't. Thank you. <laughs> it was code. <laughs> 
Uh, Christy W. wants to know, how did you meet your wives? When did you know? How did you propose? You going to go first? Uh, it will if you want. Uh, I met my wife uh, at work at Later with Greg Kinnear. She had gotten a temp gig there when her album, her record deal was starting to go shitty, her record company, uh, and ended up as Greg Kinnear's assistant. And I ended up as a writer on the show, my first network gig. And were you, was it love at first sight? Uh, no, it wasn't love at first sight. We became, was it friends at first greeting? We became friends quickly. And she claims that part of why she fell for me was that she read my shit every day because she, she, they put it on Craig's desk. This is the thing you'd like to believe about someone, that, you know? Right? I, I didn't. I didn't argue with her. You know what was sexy was your bit about uh, the donkey coming in to the studio, All right? <laughs> Uh, but then she like started sitting in with our. I had the band with Paul Feig and Gruber that we used to play at the Burbank Bar, and she had her actual band, and so she would come and sit in with our band. Wait, now was this after you met at the Greg Kinnear, or was uh, it constant? Same, con- oh, same time, same wow, time. What a small world! And uh, how'd you propose? Uh, I proposed. I had bought. I had had a, I designed a ring and had it made in the in the uh, jewelry district downtown. Why did you say by uh, Jews? You know, what's the matter? Just say it. If that's what you mean. So I. Yeah, I just realized I can. I could if I wanted to. I could give you signals <laughs> <laughs> that they couldn't see. I could be like that. Uh, Things I don't want them to hear. You could. You could. This show sucks. Y- year two. That could be your mission. Very exciting. Um, so you had the ring made. So I had the ring made. So the ring, it, was, it was getting the ring that determined when I proposed, basically. Um, and in fact, I went down. I was working on a pilot with Paul Feig and Trace Beaulieu. We, and we know that. When, when it was did... called Fast Food Films. It was on FX. It was, I remember that. It was that. a series on FX that I, I don't remember what it was, I co-created. But... And I, I didn't stay for the series, but I... Oh. Um, and uh, so, yeah, actually, we, uh, the day I proposed, we had actually gone to a wedding that day, but it was it was coincidence. I just had the ring, and it was burning a hole in my pocket. So I and and uh, how did she react? Was she surprised? She said, "Are you serious?" Like with sort of a disgusted kind of shock, because we hadn't talked about it. How long had been going out? Uh, we had lived together at that point. We've been going. We uh, this was it was five years before we got married, but we lived together for. Two years, then bought a house, and then he, in the year we bought the house, we got married after two. <laughs> Josh. What? Josh. What? Uh-huh. So you were saying I just you were, had a dream about a beautiful life I had with a woman named Allison. <laughs> I met uh, Susan at the improv uh, because the improv used to be a more well, I guess it still could be fun, but, but everybody used to hang out at the improv in the uh, 90s, yeah. you know, the the outside room. And then uh, we fought like cats and dogs for a couple of years. Uh, we did not live together until we got married. Is that true? No, we lived together once we decided to get married. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, and what, what we a uh, nine 11 we were 9 11 marriage people, 9 11 made us both re examine. What the hell are we doing with our lives? We were both probably scared of marriage. And then that kind of put us over the top. I don't know why. Hey, that's that the was... same thing that happened to me, Chips. Nine eleven <laughs> sent me down the road to the truth. Just like you. We're so similar. Yeah. I knew hey, we'd bond. That reminds me of what happened to me with nine eleven. I became an asshole. <laughs> Shoot you. After nine eleven I I started to hate foreigners. Cool <laughs> cop. Hey. Hey. A uh, all I would, what were the names? Did you think he ever? He probably uses Habib. What would he use now? Hey, he Farouk. Hey, Farouk. <laughs> so that's how we did it, and I'm very happy. Check me out. Like, I'm. And what's our secret? Did he say what's our secret? Uh, no. Because oh. <laughs> I don't have one. I'm. Yeah. Uh, I'm very, very. Sad. I'm it very. Was good. When did you know? Was the oh, question. uh, nine eleven. That's right. Yeah. For me, it was a realization that we had been together long enough that it couldn't suck more to break up. Wow. So That's was, so touching. So it was, I figured getting married could only be 
could only improve things was sort of my theory. Mm. So, you know, because I like if we got divorced, it would suck just as much as because we were living together. It would suck just like it would be just as heartbreaking, right, for That's it true. to end. But I figured marriage could actually give it. It's so romantic. I mean, a bigger, a bigger, I mean, a bigger sky to fill. I'm sure Alice with his did. light. <laughs> I mean, I'm weeping. Hey, she answered, "Are you serious?" Are you <laughs> when serious? I asked, so sentimentality and points said yes. are still in my fucking court. Did she take t- time? No, she she quickly said yes. After that, that she just really, she just really, she wasn't that interested in getting married. She she didn't. She marriage wasn't an institution she had a lot of faith in. So oh. it wasn't like one of her goals, and we never talked about it as as it was headed. You know that wow. it was that it was heading that way. It wasn't a foregone conclusion. Was that the way? Uh, I think were you Joel Madison's yard? We I had we had the ceremony anything. here for for small. Yeah, and I the, think we had then, was. But why we, were, don't I we were our anything. own band and stuff. Yeah, I have to ask Susan. I can't remember anything. I've just I I just recently. You know where you might have been in Montreal. It was July twenty fourth. That's, I was in Montreal for, I, I think for Gruber's wedding. No, I think you're at Gruber's wedding. No, I, that I know I wasn't at because I always felt bad about that. But not mine. Missing mine was fine. The fact that I can't remember whether you're what Allison looks like. I can't remember what uh, Joel Madison's backyard looks like. Right. I can't remember what my wife looks like. It's not good. It's, these are not good signs. It's time to stop smoking pot. Yes, I'm so glad you came up with that idea. I, I read about it in the papers. Tweet Bahara says, Kathy McCarty and I were thrilled about our shout-outs in Tesho 51. Thank you. Yeah, and it was fun. They were in the front row of one of my shows at the, uh, at the uh, uh, I can't, at Austin. One of the Austin shows, right down front, baby. For Dana Gould's show, the Tinkle Twins. Yeah. I, I know I sound like an old man trying to remember where his keys are. Mm-hmm. I like Montreal, Josh. <laughs> Good town, right? French or something? I don't know if I'm a spy or I've lost my memory. The man who forgot how much he knew. <laughs> I hate that expression, too. I've forgotten more than... Oh, I hate that. Than you would know. I have more in my little finger than you have. That's just, It's a ridiculous metaphor. Okay. Glad we covered that. Seth Dick the Third says... <laughs> <laughs> That's what? a good stare. That's a good stare. Did you say sucks Dick the Third? No, I said Seth Dick the Third. But is the Dick is is a, a, a sexual thing, or is his last name Dick? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to realize something. The snoring thing is old, but it's not getting old like not got old. <laughs> it is great. I, it's like I can do it to myself. I can do it to you. Right, exactly. It's all per. <laughs> You know, like my mom was, uh, you know, my mom was sick in the hospital, so I get into the hospital, and she's like, oh, how you feel, mom? She's like, well, I have a lot. And I went, <laughs> and pretended to collapse on the bed and boredom. <laughs> Can you read the letters slower? <laughs> I love this new character, Josh. This guy's giving it to you, full of spinnaker and beans. Seth Dick the Third's question was, do you play cards? Gin rummy, perhaps. Well, we sure as fuck don't play chess. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you saying it? Huh? Is that what you're saying? That's my, that was my Oh, answer. I was like, I, I, all of a sudden I thought you were putting a little English on the email. Yeah. I play poker. I'm not good at it, but that I do love playing poker. I don't like pay, playing board games or any, and much to Susan's chagrin. I don't like Boggle. Well, she doesn't love Boggle. What is a good board game? Um, do you like board games in general? Backgammon. Seems confusing. Yeah. But, uh, but poker I love because you can win money and it's, it's fun. You can do that with backgammon too. Um, no, uh, ba- backgammon, a lot of the best poker players were backgammon champions. Yeah, those like bridge players too. Yeah, like bridge players too. Strategy, strategy game people. One no Trump. Imagine if there's that a, was there's real. A whole, there's a whole branch of my dad's family that's very, like I told you, my, my cousin Howard Weinstein is like a international bridge champion. And, I think you have. And they were all into backgammon and bridge and pinochle. And Did you say pinochle? Pinochle. You, you didn't say pinochle, though, right? I did not go you for said the full. I said pinochle. No, I, I said it more wrong. like You're knuckle. Wrong. I'm going to tell you right now. You know how I accuse you of things and then I'm wrong? I'm going out on a limb now. It's pinochle. Sure, okay. And what did you say? 
I don't care. I don't care either. Josh, <laughs> you told me to be angry. It's not working. No, it's not. Why? I take it back. Do you think me being an idiot just isn't uh, appealing? What would set an Andy Kindler brand CPAP machine apart from the other guys, says Keith Bush. I never thought about it to right now, and I don't think there <laughs> are good. celebrity hosted CPAP machines. Yet. But mine, mine would start out as a CPAP machine, and halfway through the night, it would shut down and go off on a tangent. It would digress from your <laughs> breathing. But I, I should, I, I, what he's saying is we should do more ads. Is that, what, is that how you interpret it? I think it would be so great. We'd be like Ed McMahon. Enough with the breathing, it would say. <laughs> hey, how's your breathing? Not so good, I imagine. Emma Marx says, happy podcast anniversary, guys. Heaven forbid, if you had to pick another co-host, dead or alive, who would you pick? Um, some, Bob or Ray. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. One of the two. Okay. I would go with literally fucking anyone. What? What? <laughs> uh, that delivery that you just did was classic. Um, Tweet Bahara is back. <laughs> now playing, Jail the Swineson is Sherlock Holmes, and Andy Kindler is Dr. Watson in Enough Already with the Mr. Know It All Act. I think that's fantastic. You, I could make a meal out of every, I, I, I'll add that to my act if he lets me. <laughs> my act. Crab People says, Andy, break out the guitar. We need a performance of Karen, and for sure. Well, here's the thing if I ever did play guitar, it would not be. Karen, or for sure, because we've already... No, we have the greatest version of Karen has been remade, the reboot. For sure would just be... Here's how it sounds. For sure... For sure... That's the chorus, Josh. Yeah. Give me any, any of the verse. I don't remember the song. It's that bad. Wow. It's that bad. I wrote the Macarena. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people shouldn't. We together wrote it. You came up with bing, bang, ding, dak, dak. And then I said, yakadapa, dupa, dek, ding, dak, dek, <laughs> I'm sorry for a lot of what's happened on this podcast. I wish I could take it back. A lot of it'll get fixed. Callan Holder says, just started out doing stand-up. I signed up for a class, and I have five minutes of clean material written by Sunday. Any advice? Oh, I have to have five minutes. Oh. Uh... Five minutes? That's a long first. Is this the first time I ever on stage? Uh, I guess so. That's a long set for the first time. Don't you think? That's, I think that's what I had to do. Oh, I always thought it was like a minute. Uh, try to be nice to yourself is my only advice. Because I think it's such a hard thing to do the first time. Just don't uh, try Try to, uh, uh, you don't have to be overconfident, but be nice to yourself. Be nice to yourself is a good thing, I think. I think another piece would be, uh, well, this is coming out Monday, and he has to have it written by Sunday, so the advice is pointless. I'm You're kidding. so tied into this linear time thing. Um, my point uh, was going to be, though, uh, just you know, talk about stuff that's you. You know, talk about things that make you you, and you know, at least you won't be doing hacky stuff then. Right. That's kind of a negative thing. At least you won't be. I don't want you to do hacky stuff. But maybe he could tell us. He'll be able to tell us after the gig how it went. Yes. Uh, it's have, not easy. It's not easy. It's have not easy fun. The first time. It's, it's like fun. golf, though. All it really takes is one solid joke to make you want to come back. That's true. You'll you connect. That, you'll connect on something, and you you'll go, laugh, "Oh, I get it." You're gonna get a laugh. Yeah, for sure. And that's gonna feel pretty good. Yeah. Unless you go blue. Uh, Greg Kelly, nickel dime person. Says, uh, I'm just reading the whole handle for cool. everybody. Uh, is Tennessee Tuxedo the best cartoon in set in a zoo? I don't know. We'll have to go ask Mr. <laughs> Mr. Whoopi. I don't know who that is. Is that Hanna Barbera? No, it was uh, Warner Brothers. It was uh, Bullwinkle World, I believe. Oh. Or no, Underdog World, actually. Boy, I don't remember. Tuxedo. Tennessee Tuxedo will not fail. It was Don Adams. It was Don Adams for yeah. real? Uh, G Tennessee. Let's go see Mr. Whoopi. I, I think I saw every episode of that. Come movie. along, Chumley. I think I know that show. Okay, good. Exactly. From your 
characterization. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Yoshi Yamamoto has a little uh, short story here. <laughs> uh, uh, he says, It may seem like I've been subtly bullying Andy the past few weeks, so being the one-year Thought Spiral anniversary, I thought it'd be a good time to share these anecdotes. For one, Andy's therapy journey and progress convinced me to go back after a decade-plus hiatus because of how eerily similar my problems are. In addition, I recently dug up a four-year-old prescription for a sleep study that I chickened out on to get it renewed and see if I likely have sleep apnea. That's great. Thanks for making me a funnier and healthier person. Thank you. Thank you, Yoshi. You've been near, You've been like uh, money in the bank the whole year. I don't mean like you were giving us money, but you are you are always there with acute observations. Not cute. Acute. Yes. And not a single cute observation. Not Right. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, Perush is back in the timeline saying, <laughs> first a bug, Test Show 49, then now a bird. You know what's missing, though? First guest, Joel Madison. You know, you, you know, Perush. What is he doing? Is he... he Perush. Is he, <laughs> has, is he picking has, at his Joel, cab? Has Joel hired you as an agent? Oh, that I would believe. Joel, <laughs> uh, I'm... Joel, well, I wouldn't put past Joel to have fake callers and people... I think uh, I'm I don't not know. saying why I'm not. I I, I don't see how Perush is playing this though, because he he seems to be what we call a super fan of the show, right? And yet he's most frequently saying we should change the format of the you show. You know what I think he's doing? He's playing the long con. You think? <laughs> I always wanted to use that. Right. Was that a good use of it? That was good enough. Yeah. Yeah. The long I game. I think Perush. You know, like one of those people where you say, "Hey, maybe you're listening." I'm not saying I've ever said this, but you might at one day go, hey, Perush, you might have to cut back on listening to the podcast. When it gets to 200 and he's going to say, dear gentlemen, this is the fourth time that Andy has, has done Marcus Welby. <laughs> if Perush wasn't out there catalog logging this, what would we do? We'd use Alex's log. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I lost at LA Web Fest. I lost at LA Web Fest. Brett Weinbach. One. He didn't even show up. <laughs> uh, Karen from at Karen Loves Andy. Wait a second. Is that a real address? <laughs> Andy, I want to waste my time on you. Oh, is that an actual email? <laughs> it's an actual. Someone someone took the time <laughs> to set up the fake account that is the, just for that joke. <laughs> that's the most, it's, uh, either I'm going to die soon right. from being stalked by emails Karen I'm guessing it's like Perouche. <laughs> or, oh. Or, Dan, like, or Dana Schwartz. And then at some point. And then someone's going to call me now and say, fuck you, it was me. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, <laughs> see. <laughs> Do we have anybody? Well, thank you very much, Karen. <laughs> uh, is she saying I should waste my time on her or, or I or don't waste my time on her? She's saying, Andy, I want to waste my time on you. Oh, hello. Yes. I hope when I would be in a romantic situation that I wouldn't actually say, hello. <laughs> Isn't that what you said on your wedding night? <laughs> Keith in full gear says, how does it feel to turn one year old? Parenthetically, responding feels like an obvious opportunity to bring out the baby voice. I'm a big boy. <laughs> You're one years old now? <laughs> Have you enjoyed being on the show? Uh, no. You haven't, big baby? People hate me. Yeah, but you don't, it doesn't seem to dissuade you from <laughs> launching into it. You seem to launch into it without... <laughs> don't you feel a little embarrassed that, you, that, you're, that you're, you're, you're like kind of like a cheapening? Maybe you're cheapening the baby. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, do you have any, any projects, baby projects coming up? I do. <laughs> Oh, baby's been killed. Hey, we're doing a stillborn joke. <laughs> My name is Sid. <laughs> okay, they, okay. They're gonna, you know what? They could shut us down for that joke. <laughs> Joe says, funniest recent moment on TS, Andy's saying he wants to be a kitty, just like he was TJ Souls in Stripes. That's actually PJ Souls, but... Uh, and uh, Bill Murray was giving him the Aunt Jemima treatment, an ice cream scoop. Distant second, being briefly confused about what kind of things are animals. Oh, God, that was... Now, see, that was a low point for me. 
There you go. Because I actually one did, man's trash is another man's yeah, treasure. I, I did feel, but the thing is, there's growth in my life. I'm at least willing to admit that I don't know much. That's really worked out. Second base. <laughs> David Gogo says, "What's the fucking deal with Dennis Miller?" I think we've covered that. Yeah, and if you can figure it out, David Gogo, please tell us. Um, man. I'm bummed, but I think we're done. <laughs> well, you, are you are you bummed that we're done because you don't think it had a beginning, a middle, and end like your normal, uh, or or is it you're probably like, oh my god? No, I was looking for Big Finishville. Like Big Finishville, yeah. sure. That's where you make up something like a version of Karen's. Uh, hey, from Edna, stay away, stay within five miles from my house. Restraining order, something like that. Yeah, write it, write it this week. You don't spend any time writing the show. No. During the week. No. And I never... Did you have things written down? I write it in the edit. That's true. I, I have no complaints. And anything that I would say, if I had a complaint, why would who would want to hear it? So we've come to the end of our first year of podcasting. That's I didn't realize. You know, during the show, several times I've forgotten that it's an anniversary. But it doesn't feel it's like an anniversary. It's not an anniversary show. It just is the yeah. anniversary. First of all, we can't be doing greatest hits anniversary shows until we're on 10, 12, 15 years, well, 20 no. we, years. We did of, one after six months. So Yeah, but I mean, we got to really put time into this. You know, you ever listen to those guys, uh, uh, Ken and uh, um, John and Ken? Yeah. They're horrible. I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there. No, we've got to do this show solid five, you know, and all take it on the road, do a college series like Chris Matthews. Right. This show has been three hours. This is the best, either the best show we've ever done or the, our last show as we realize. No. I just want to say it's been one year. It's, it seems longer. It does. It's one year. It doesn't feel, I guess, it doesn't feel like a year because we're, we, don't ha we haven't had success. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah. We, this year, we got to take it to the next level, be on the cover of TV Guide maybe <laughs> or Podcast Guide. All right. And we will be going out to the clubs. We promise, we don't know if we'll be funny this following year. You're just talking to talk. We don't know if we'll be interesting. <laughs> you are just talking to talk right now. But I do promise one thing, Jeff. Hey, if you want to talk to us uh, during the week, yes. send us an email at thoughtspiralshow at gmail.com. Listen, this man's giving you good information. Follow us on Twitter. Why not? Follow at Andy Kindler. Follow at J. Elvis Weinstein. Yes, follow sir, thought follow. underscore spiral. Yes. Uh, rate us on iTunes. Rate us and uh, and review us review on us. iTunes. Yeah. And give us money. Send us money. Don't send us money. Vendome me. It's not Vendome, right? I Ven me. Ven me. Venmo, is it? Why don't you send me Venmo? <laughs> hey, Dennis, I heard, uh, I heard you got, uh, I heard you got uh, a job with Breitbart. What are they paying you through Venmo? <laughs> Bitcoins? Good night, Josh. They pay me and I can't write a Bitcoin. <laughs> I was ready to cut the show up before that show. Now we should cut it off. <laughs> <laughs>